will be speaking almost at the same time to four different kinds of people. I will not finish one before I move to the other. When I say something under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you will know whether it is yours or not. If it is yours, you take it. If it is not yours, just leave it so that your neighbor can take it. Please celebrate your choir. They are fantastic. Fantastic. Amen. As I speak, when Reverend Kingsley will come and put the other things in, I'll be addressing in my message the singles, the married. I also have a word for parents and for in-laws. And we're going to be reading just one chapter of the Bible. It is loaded. The kind of things God showed me from that passage, there is no way I can finish downloading here. So I'm going to just give you the tips from the book of Genesis chapter number 24. Genesis chapter 24. Let's go on this journey. From verse number 1, the Bible says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. You will not be cut short in the middle of your years. Make sure your amen is very loud when I pray for you. Some people work, they labor. They labor over their marriages. They labor over their children. They labor over their businesses and ministries and what have you. And when it is time for them to start reaping, they die. In this city of Ibadan, my husband was ministering at a wedding ceremony. And I was privileged to be with him at Orita Mefa Baptist Church. But I noticed that almost throughout the service, the groom was crying. Thank you, sir. He was crying profusely. And I asked some questions. What happened? This is supposed to be his day of joy. Why is he crying so badly and so profusely? And I was told that his mother died recently. That woman sold kerosene to sponsor him. She sold firewood to see him through school. And this is her day of joy. And she's in the grave. Or she was in the grave. On the days that matter the most, may you not be missing. Amen. Can I remind you that amen is not an encouragement to the preacher. Amen is the acceptance of a divine verdict. It is not every day that he's special, maybe. But you get to a particular age in your life when every day becomes special. You cannot afford to misuse any day. <clears throat> but there are days that are very important, very crucial. On such days, nobody will represent you. I'm beginning to like your amen. Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in some things. Few things. All things. All means all. I studied it. English language in the university. All means including everything minus nothing. So the first thing I want to tell you today is that marriage is meant to be a blessing and not a curse. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Marriage according to God, his plan and his purpose is meant to be a blessing, not a trouble, if you get it right. That popular scripture in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thought that I think towards you, thought of peace and not of evil. So your marriage is not supposed to give you trouble. There may be challenges. Yes, 
but there shouldn't be trouble. There shouldn't be trouble. For I know the thoughts and the plans that I have towards you. My plan is to give you an expected end, a great future, a peaceful one. Every storm troubling your marital destiny today, I curse it in the name of Jesus. God is a good God, very good God. He is so good, there is no badness in him. The devil is so bad, there is no goodness in him. And God initiated marriage. Marriage is a gift of God to humanity. Man didn't initiate marriage. God did. And if ye that are evil know how to give good things to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father? God is so good. If he gave marriage as a gift, then you should know it is a good thing. A very, very good, a fantastically good thing. Marriage is a blessing and not a trouble and not a curse. Marriage is supposed to give you peace. Abraham was old, was stricken in age, and the Lord blessed him. The Lord had blessed him in all things. May that be your story at the end of your days on earth. Let's go on because that passage has 67 verses. And I have so much to share with you. Verse 2, and Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. The second thing I want to mention to you today is that parents, please be involved in your children's lives. We're talking about marimatics, and I'm addressing four groups of people without demarcating. You just pick whichever is yours. I'm talking to the singles, I'm talking to the married, I'm talking to parents, and I'm talking to in-laws. That's my mission and my assignment here this afternoon. Marriage is a blessing. That's God's plan. Number two, if you are a parent, please be involved in your children's lives. Not only when it has to do with academics, take home assignment, food, and what have you, but most importantly, in their marital destiny. And that means that as a parent, the day you discover that you are pregnant, start praying for your children, particularly about who will marry them or who they will marry. No matter how blessed you are, no matter how anointed you are, no matter how wealthy you are, no matter how successful you are, if your children miss it in their marriages, the evening of your life is not secure. I see, Lord, I paused so you could think about what I just said. No matter how prosperous you are, no matter how fantastically blessed you are, if your children's marriages have trouble, the evening of your life is not guaranteed. Abraham was old. He was well stricken in age. Then he remembered that success without succession is practical failure. He decided to settle his son. Parents, be involved in your children's lives. And the starting point is prayer. What your hand cannot handle, there is a God in heaven that can manage it. Pregnant women, the day the doctor tells you you are pregnant, every day, put your right hand or whatever, your left hand, on your tummy and pray for your child. Pray about who they will marry. Pray about the academics. Pray about everything that has to do with them. As a single person in this city of Ibadan, this is where I was born, this is where I got born again, this is where I got married, this city, I had two children. So this is home for me. In this city of Ibadan, as a single lady, I didn't know who will marry me, I didn't know who I will marry, I started praying about my marriage. I prayed so fanatically about my mother-in-law. 
Because those were the days when ladies were praying that their mothers-in-law should die or that they should not have mothers-in-law. And I know that life is not governed by miracles. Life is governed by principles. And one of the most profound principles of life is found in Genesis chapter 8 and verse number 22. While the earth remaineth. Does the earth remain? Yes. Seed, time, harvest shall not cease. If you don't want to reap it, then don't sow it. Don't sow it. Because you can never attract what you attack. Never. So rather than curse my mother-in-law or make her to die, I began to pray. My mother-in-law died at the age of 110. She told me at a point in her life to raise my right hand up. Prayed for me like never before. She said to me one day, I came visiting, not because of my son, but because of you. Because I know I'm going to die very soon. I, am, I came to bless you. She said, raise your right hand up. I did. She said, among your mates, in 70 times 7 ways, you will be outstanding. 110. That is why I have become unkillable. Toss it up and down. There are covenant forces working in my life. Even when I make mistakes, my mistakes are turned to miracles. The devil that will stop me is not yet born. Some people go, some are sent. I'm sent and covered. Two Sundays ago, I was at KICC Lagos. And I preached a message and I said, Satan, how market? My critics, how market? Some of you waste time replying your critics. You don't need it. Just reply them with more success. Because the reason why some of them criticize you is because they are envy jealists. Pray for your children. Pray about who they will marry. Tell God to give your girls seats in their husband's homes. Critics. Evil people. People that want you to go to the market and not sell. People that want you to sell and not bring profit home. Pray against them for your children. When Kenneth Copeland's ministry turned 35, he, he published a book. I have, that, I have a copy of that book. And in that book, he was telling his life story. And he said he used to be a very bad, 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 but a very bad person. Very bad boy, Kenneth Copeland. Arguably, today, he is the richest man of God on earth. Arguably. America discovered oil in his compound. Do you know what that means? He said some, once in a while, when I'm tired of living on planet earth, I jump inside one of the planes and I fly to the sky. And I pray in tongues for about two hours. He said it is cooler there. And I just come back. That's the kind of heaven I want to go. I don't want to go to the heaven where they don't wear jewelries. <laughs> they must tell you to cover your head until you have crocro. -cro. I don't want that kind. I like the heaven Kenneth Copeland is going. That's the kind of heaven I like. I don't want to go to heaven like Lazarus. He made heaven, but he sat at the feet of Abraham. I want to go to heaven like Abraham. He has an estate in heaven. Mm. Chop here, chop there. That's the kind I want. All this, maybe I'll get there if I have the time. All this looking 67 at 37. It's not spirituality, it is religion. Say, my husband is a man of God. Madam, he's first a man, then of God. Of 
Pray for your children. Pray about their marriages. Pray that they will not marry your enemies. Pray that you will have peace when you are old. Once you are 50, I am 56. Once you are 50, the evening of your life has begun. Once you are 70, you are in the night. And the devil is not your well-wisher. So, pray for them. Abraham said, look, 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 I need to settle things. And I want to speak to fathers here. There are four kinds of fathers. I don't have the time because that's not what I came here to talk about today. There are four kinds of fathers. There are absentee fathers. They are there but they are not there. Ministry has taken over their lives. They don't have time for their children. Hmm. Business is their number one reason for existing. They don't have time for their children. They don't help their children with take-home assignments. They are never there when their kids are eating. Even when their children straight to where they are, they will take their children. I am busy reading the book of Zephaniah and Zechariah and Habakkuk. If your Christianity does not work at home, don't bother to export it. What are you preaching? You don't have time for your children? You don't understand the Bible. This is the order. God first. Your family second. Ministry third. Business third. Career third. The home was established in the book of Genesis chapter 2. The church was not born until the book of Exodus. So take care of your home. Take care of your children. So that in the evening of your, of your life, your children will not detest your God. And say, I don't want to serve the God that stole my parents from me. Pray for your children. Know your child. Love your child. And train your child. Know your child. And there is no way you can know your child if you don't spend time. Till I see Jesus, I will continue to bless my father. He taught me how to write. My father would bend over me, hold my hand and tell me, Olufon, can I see those lines? You know those two Ds that we used to, oh, some of you are so young. We used to use one 2D writing. You say, these lines are not for decoration right on top. I have one of the best handwritings in the world. Because my father took his time to teach me. Stop telling your children, go, 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 go to your mommy. Hey, 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 come and carry your children. Mm. Your spam produced those children. They bear your name. Be involved in their lives. Do not be an absentee father. I live in Ondo State. I'm not from there. But I had a story that a man died some time ago in Ondo Town. And his children removed all the car keys and all the house keys and all the room keys and placed the bunch on his chest in the casket. Dad, you forgot your keys. It, you have only three stages in your children's life, three seasons. Maybe I'll get there. A time comes when they can look at you and tell you anything. They are no longer just your children. Treat them very well. Teach them. Know your child. Love your child. Train your child. Pray for your child. Abraham was involved. Some of you, you leave everything to pastors. You leave everything to Sunday school teachers. There's no Sunday school teacher that can adequately train your child for you. Your child's life is like this plain sheet of paper. God gives that child to you to write whatever you like. Don't give it to your mother. Don't give it to your house help. Monday to Friday you are out. At a point in my life, I put my career on hold to raise my kids. I've not had the first house help in my life. The first. You may not be able to do that because times have changed. But I decided. Because I remember that the generation of my children will either bless me or curse me. Depending on what I give them. So I put my career on hold. Thursday evening, my husband and I did not go anywhere for years. 
I didn't accept one single invitation when my kids were young. I stayed at home to train them, to give them values. Two boys, two girls, and some adopted. Thursday night was our family night. Our kids could ask us any question. We were pastors, yes, but we decided to raise those kids by ourselves. Because I have looked at it. I didn't even want to be married at all. In this city of Ibado, I did not want to be married as a non-believer. And even when I became a Christian, because I didn't see examples. Even my pastor's marriage was nothing to write to me about. So I, I vowed never to be married until God gave me an encounter. And I decided that I will make a difference. Pray for your children. Know your children. Love them and show them that they are loved. Psychologists have discovered that if you always hug your teenager, you will help him to be emotionally stable. Fathers, hug your girls. Don't let one alhaji teach them. Hug your children. Cuddle them. Cuddle them. Don't let one demon-possessed uncle come and scatter what you have been building. Sit down with your children. Explain life to them. Then say, I'm shy. Mm -mm. When our children were getting married, each of them, the, men, the boys, the girls, my husband had sessions with them. This is what a man wants. This is what a woman wants. This is what you should do. This is what you should not do. And all that. You're taking care of other people. Take care of your children. Befriend your children. Let them be able to speak to you. One girl walked up to me. Teenager has confided in me a lot. She said, mommy, I have aborted six times. She's a pastor's daughter. And her mother told me she's a virgin. She said, the doctor used one rod and warned me the last time. The doctor said, this is deliberate. So you will remember this pain. If you ever come back here for abortion, one young man, his father is a pastor. I thank God he's born again today. He said he will come for vigil, put his gun inside his socks, tuck it in. Praise worship has begun. He's there. Daddy will say, oh, my son is in church. He will sneak out with six of his children for armed robbery. Before the service is over, he's back. Pastor's child. Treat your pastors very well. Bless them. Help them. Encourage them. They are laboring so much. Sometimes at the detriment of their homes, you cannot afford to hurt them or their wives, or their children continually. See, 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 pastor's child. See, pastor's child running around in church. Did he drop from heaven? He also will go through infancy and childhood and teen years. Don't you, your children, don't they run around? So it's our, once you are a pastor, you are in trouble. May God forgive you. Number three, when Genesis chapter 24 Verse 4, thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred. This is for the singles. Marry from your country and your kindred. Hmm. Don't marry from abroad. What is this woman saying? Marry from your country. Marry from your kindred. If you are born again, you belong to the commonwealth of Israel. You are a kingdom person. Don't marry an unbeliever. Second Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse number 14. Be not unequally yoked. Second Corinthians 6, 14. Together with an unbeliever. Don't smell what you don't want to eat. Don't price what you don't want to buy in the market. It is not everything that glitters that is gold. Stop dating that Alhaji. Stop dating that man that has a wife. You are the secretary and in the office your neck cannot say, oh, God, God, God. your neck is really like this. I pity you. When fornication takes place, it is the woman that loses. You lose more. Because a part of you goes with that man irretraceably. The head usher in our ministry was my mate at St. Paul's Anglican Primary School here. Oduano Ibado. You know, when he first joined the church, I said, God, imagine if this man had slept with me when we were in school. What will I? And I'm now the bishop's wife. Blackmail. I need three million. Madam, my name. Shaking loss of all. Because you don't 
know who you will marry. Keep your dignity. Keep yourself. Don't let anybody talk you. Let me tell you the truth. Life does not end on Instagram. There's no life there. If you see the life they live, you don't want to be like them. Don't base your values on social media. Choose to be different. Marry your kindred, your kinsman. Who is your kinsman? Someone that has given his or her life to Jesus. Serve the same God with your spouse. Abraham said, marry for my son from my country. Don't say I will convert him. You are not a converter. People hardly change when they get married. It is what is inside them that comes out. Just like money. Money is not bad. Not, money is not good. Money takes on the complexion of the owner. And don't tell me that you are very humble until I have found out some things are in your life. E.g. wealth, power, position. You are so wealthy and you can still kneel down to greet the people you used to kneel down to greet. You can still prostrate to greet your daddy. Your chin touches the ground as a Yoruba boy. He said there's one man in our church. He's very poor but very humble. What else will a poor man be? What else? 